once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Today I will be reviewing the 1875 by Romeo y Julieta. It's an all new cigar. Now, I know what you're thinking. Thinking, 1875 by Romeo y Julieta, that's not a new cigar. It's been around for, for a long time. Long time. Okay, this is the 1875 by Romeo y Julieta. Not to be confused with the Romeo y Julieta 1875. Totally different cigar. Same name, just switched everything around, and now it's a different cigar. However, this does have an Indonesian uh, shade-grown wrapper, Dominican binder and Dominican fillers. Um, the way you can tell this cigar apart from the Romeo Juliet 1875 is, for one, the band is white with a red center, and then 1875 in the center. In addition, there's a secondary band, it's a red band, and in gold it has 1875. So, now, there you have it. If that uh, doesn't clarify everything for you, you're an idiot. Ah, just kidding, I'm an idiot. Anyway, let's see what we have here. I don't believe I've ever had an Indonesian shade-grown wrapper before. I don't think so. Not knowingly, anyway. So, this is a Toro size, uh, 6 by maybe 52, I believe. Something like that. It's got some heft to it. Good pack. It's, it's firm, but just, just an ever so slight amount of give to it. Uh, kind of a uh, milk chocolate brown in color. Uh, some you know, minor veining, no, no big deal. Uh, tight seams has a what do we have on there double cap at least a double might be a might be a triple on there I'm not sure at least a double cap some sweet tobacco on the nose smells pretty good actually something else in there. It's starting to open up. The longer it's out of the cellophane, the, the more sensor coming forward. Boy, I'm not... They're all kind of melded together. They haven't all opened up yet, but I'm definitely picking up some sweet tobacco. A little bit of... A little bit of cocoa in there, maybe? Okay, the foot. Boy, that's nice. Some grains. Some green grasses, fresh green grasses. Cocoa. Very subtle hint of cedar. There's a lot going on. I mean, it's everything's just so melded together it's not really opening up and you know becoming you know this flavor is defined and this flavor is defined and this sense defined it's just everything's just kind of mixed in there and it's slowly opening up but I don't want to spend the next hour and a half sniffing my cigar I want to spend the next hour and a half smoking my cigar so without any further ado today I'll be using guillotine cutter I hope I don't regret that because the draw is a little bit snug hopefully it'll open up of course if I have to I can always go get my guillotine cutter and open it up some more but anywho Definitely some leather and some cedar on the pre-light draw. Get some more grains in there. Very nice, very nice. Off to a very good start. Alright. We'll get it toasted up. 
Now, I'm not using one of my fancy lighters today. I'm using a cheap lighter I picked up at Walmart. Kind of neat. One of those multi-tool lighters. I think it was about $7, $7 $8, something like that. A knife on it, a corkscrew, a bottle opener, and a single torch jet flame windproof lighter. So we'll get toasted up. And then, this lighter is actually kind of neat. I mean, for only being like seven bucks or whatever, it's pretty hefty. It's it's all metal construction. No cheap plastic parts on this. So far, the lighter seems to be doing a pretty good job. Granted, there's hardly any wind out here, but I did test it out after I bought it, where I would light breeze doesn't go out. I don't know if I'd try to use it during a tsunami or a hurricane or a tornado, but I tell you, it seems to be doing a really good job toasting my cigar. I'm real happy with this so far. And if I break it or it quits working or I lose it or I ding it up in my pocket with everything else in my pocket, it was only seven bucks, no big deal. There we go. Seem to do just fine lighting. Nice even light. As I mentioned, the draw is pretty snug. I'll give it you know, part way into the first third. You know, I won't give it a whole long, a whole, whole, whole lot of time, maybe half inch in or something. Then I'll, if it hasn't loosened up, maybe I'll do a guillotine cut. Or maybe I'll take the V cutter and cut it crossways, put a cross in it. All right, getting that initial blast of pepper, not overpowering, kind of a medium, maybe a medium plus blast of pepper. All right, at the moment, that's all I'm getting. I'm going to let it heat up, and I'll come back somewhere in the first third. I'm pairing today's cigar with Elijah Craig. 12-year-old, small batch, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. It's one of my favorites. You see, there's not a whole lot left in it. It's a large bottle. This isn't the basic 750 milliliter. This is um, 1.75 liters, so it's twice the size. As I mentioned, this is one of my favorites, so I've got a good deal on a larger bottle. So, dram. That is some wonderful stuff. 94 proof, 47% alcohol by volume. We'll add about a teaspoon of water into my dram. Give a little swirl. Put the lid on it, give it a chance to open up. We'll come back to that after uh, the cigar review. Here we are about 25 minutes in. The, uh, the burn had started going a little, you know, angled, but it seems to be trying to correct itself. Haven't done any kind of touch-ups or anything. I've got uh, about an inch of ash, something like that. The uh, draw is still a little bit snug. I, uh, I, I haven't felt the need to try to open it up any yet. I'm just going to let it go as it is and see what happens. It doesn't seem to be a real problem. So uh, we'll just see what happens.
picking up a heavy parchment note. It smokes a little bit dry. Something else in there. I don't think the cigar has really come into its own yet. Um, the flavors are still kind of bound together, I think. I think uh, as it heats up and gets somewhere towards the halfway point, uh, I'm, I'm hoping these flavors will start to uh, emerge and separate and become a little more forward, a little more distinguishable. Just have to see what happens. Um, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. A little bit of a spiciness there. Not quite sure what it is. Okay, we'll continue on and uh, come back somewhere in the second third. Here we are, about 45 minutes in. As you can see, I've got two inches worth of ash. I'm going to go ahead and tap it off. Came off nicely in one chunk. Has a nice little cone shape. Now the way I understand it, that's the way they're supposed to break off in a little cone like that. It's because the slower burning leaves in the center of the bunch help help to hold it all together. Um, if it were to drop off, then you risk having a little little bowl in there and it possibly going out. It's good construction when you get a you have a cone shape like that when you tap off the ash. So, draw is still a little snug, but I don't think I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to leave it just like it is. Not getting a whole lot of changes here. Um, slightly meaty, maybe a mild pepper note, real mild, real subtle. Maybe a medium minus on the body and strength. It's about all that's going on right now. I'll continue on and uh, I'll come back somewhere in the final third. Well, I'm a total idiot. I just did <laughs> a complete segment without the camera rolling. So let's try this again. I just poured another dram of my Elijah Craig, small batch 12 year old. And I added a teaspoon of water. We'll go through it again. The nose has a sweet bourbony character. You can smell the vanilla, the oak, the oak influence. Real nice, just a really pleasant whiskey. Once again, some nice corn sweetness. You taste the oak, the vanilla. Real nice stuff. One of my favorites. Now, I've been smoking this cigar for about an hour. Slightly meaty character. Subtle hints of pepper on the retrohale. Nice tobacco notes. Maybe a little bit of grain in there. Real subtle. The flavors are very subtle. Strength is very low end to medium. Really pushing towards the mild on the strength and the body. And as I mentioned, the, the flavors are real subtle. So they, I would put that more in the... Uh, mild, maybe mild to medium care, uh, category on the flavors. Great construction. I only tapped off the one time. There's a solid two inch chunk of ash in the ashtray and I currently have oh, over an inch of ash here. There's about three inches of cigar left uh, all the way to the end of course so there's in reality, I have 
probably an inch and a half, maybe, maybe if I push it, two inches worth of smoking cigar left. The cigar has a real good feel to it. It's, it's solid, not at all brittle, just the right amount of give, just ever so supple. Just feels really nice. It's almost, almost chewy feeling, like a, like a, like a cold gummy bear that has very little give to it, but it's not hard as a rock, not a frozen gummy bear, just a cold one. Just real, real pleasant. This is the way I like my cigars. Some people, uh, a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, Matt Eskridge, he likes it when they get, when they get soft. Um, for me, that's maybe not so much. Um, I like when there's some definite resistance without it being brittle. You don't hear any cracking. You don't hear the wrapper leaf trying to break or anything. So it's a good sturdy wrapper leaf. Nice construction. Pretty even burn. Um, it's, it's not you know perfectly straight or anything, but I haven't had to touch it up at all. No issues with the burn. And although the draw has been a little bit snug, um, maybe for me I should have done uh, a straight guillotine cut instead of the V-cut. I think I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I did a guillotine cut. I, I did the V-cut is what I did. Um, and, and also, make another correction, the Elijah Craig I mentioned, uh, uh, the 1.75 liter as opposed to the 750 milliliter. And, uh, you know, so it's more than, more than twice the 750. Um, I'm real happy with my selection here tonight. Good combination. The whiskey is going nicely with the cigar. Maybe not the best pairing. Um, maybe uh, in the future I'll try uh, some other whiskeys. Maybe um, maybe a scotch instead of a bourbon. Um, and being a, a, a lighter bodied cigar, maybe, um, maybe something a little more subtle. Uh, maybe just a, a, a basic house blend coffee would go well with this, I think. What else would go good would be a, um, oh, um, a port wine, maybe? Port seems to go well with most cigars. There's, I'm sure there's a few cigars out there that don't pair well with port, but, um, Every time I've paired port with a cigar, I've been happy. But if you don't like the thick, heavy sweetness of a port, then uh, maybe something more along the lines of a whiskey or even a rum. A rum would probably go really well, or a cognac. All right, I'm going to continue on. I've got you know a good amount of cigar left. I'll uh, well. Uh, point this out. I'm just now starting to see a little blister in the wrapper. I don't know if you can see it there. It's starting to bulge and there's a split in it. And it's a little bit soft under it, but no big deal. I think it'll burn right through it. But anyway, I'll continue on and I'll come back in the nub. And what of our Elijah Craig? Oh, that bourbony character is really coming through. Vanilla and oak and corn sweetness. Hint of citrus. A little bit of a little bit of spice. What is it? Very nice. Very nice. A little bit of cereal. Once again, the vanilla, the oak. Just really wonderful, wonderful stuff. I'm approaching the nub. I've got probably two inches of cigar left here. Uh-oh. The first time it's gone out. I'll go ahead and tap off that. Maybe not. It's holding on tight. So I'll just relight it. 
is the first time I've had one of these go out on me. I tell you, Romeo and Julieta's, the construction of these things are so good, it is so rare when you have to relight one of these. Other than if your humidity isn't quite right in the humidor. But then you have other burn issues, splitting or cracking or you know, that kind of thing. But if you keep your humidor right, the only other time when you might have burn issues would be if it's really humid out or if it's really dry out. But uh, I'm at you know pretty good humidity levels. Last I checked, it was 54% humidity out here. I don't know what it is at the moment. But when I started this video, I was at about 52% relative humidity. Once again, just a real, real nice, real pleasant, mild to medium body and strength cigar. Picking up some real undefined flavors at the moment. Nothing's really uh, coming forward or separating. There's nothing that's dominating the cigar. Everything's just melded together at the moment. But very pleasant. Real subtle peppery note on the mouth feel. It's got that little bit of well, it's, it's a little bit dry so that's influencing it. Not overly dry though, but I am glad I have something to drink and I, I also have water to drink with my whiskey. Generally I don't like when the smoke is real dry, but it's, it's not to the point that I'm put off by it, so it's still within my range but on the, on the drier side. Much like the draw. Snugger than I like it, but it's still doable for me. Pepper blast on the retro hail. A little bit of grilled meat in there. Nicotine starting to pick up a little bit. I can feel the kind of a it's sitting a little bit heavy on my chest, way back in, in my throat. I didn't get that earlier on. It just just upon this this relight just now was the first time I noticed it. So um, it's been uh, just a, a real pleasant, smooth cigar. The whiskey's been smooth and pleasant. A real enjoyable evening. It's real nice out. It's, it's kind of cool out. Um, mostly clear. There's some clouds, but uh, and bats are flying around collecting their bugs, and insects are chirping in the background. And earlier, I heard some birds chirping before the sun went down. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this review here, saying that the 1875 by Romeo Julieta been a real pleasant cigar. Real good construction. Really no issues. I only had to relight it the one time um, and I had set it down for a few minutes. Had to turn on the lights. Um, it had gotten too dark for the camera to pick up. So uh, yeah, that I'm sure was a big part of why it went out. Um, it's been real subtle flavors. Uh, some some pepper um, gosh just uh, you know, slightly dry smoke there's early on there was some heavy parchment paper notes 
a little bit of meatiness in there. And in the nub, a little bit of grilled meat. And there was a, not so much the flavor, but the mouth feel, that kind of cool mouth feel you get um, that that clove would offer. Not not any flavor of clove, but, but that cool mouth feel, kind of creamy. Real nice cigar. I've been real happy. Now, at the time of this review, uh, I, I don't have the retail price on this cigar. Uh, I picked this cigar up. It was in a in a uh, combo pack at Milan Tobacconist in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, they had they put five cigars. Uh, there was a couple Romeo Julietas in there, uh, Monte Cristo, and H. Upman. Um, and there are three Romeo Julietas. There's the Romeo, the 1875 Romeo by, by uh, 1875 by Romeo Julieta, and then there, there was another Romeo Juliet in there, a Monte Cristo White, and the uh, H. Upman Legacy. Forty-five dollars worth of cigars um, in their little pack was twenty-five dollars really good deal all Toro size so uh, yeah I don't know what the price of this particular cigar was it, it's new to my local tobacconist um, so I'll when I when I put my written review up on my website I will have the price uh, at that time but I'm going to end this here uh, thank you for once again watching Scorpion cigar reviews catch you next time